Well, pretty much the story so far, or at least until a few years ago, Kim Wilde and the video montage, the ladies in the studio with me. Your reactions watching that range <laughs> from recoiling in horror to, oh, I really like that bit. You should, you should have had my reactions when I was watching, actually. That was you a bit have funny. Done, actually. I think we were locked into the old sequence there a bit too, yeah. uh, bit too much, though. How do you feel looking back at your older material? Does it embarrass you now? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, some of those videos really embarrass me. Some of them don't. Oh, sorry. That's some noise, aren't I? Um, some of them don't embarrass me, but some of them do. Like the second time, you dressed up as a ridiculous one with a wi wig on, and then which other, which other one do I cringe at? Oh yeah, the touch. But you didn't show the embarrassing bits of the touch. But oh my god, that was an atrocious video. We spared you on that one. Shackered Love featured um, Calvin Hayes from Johnny Hates Jazz. Yeah. You were saying so. It's funny <laughs> to see him drumming away for you there. But you also said there was an interesting outtake from that particular video. What was that? Well, in the shower scene, when I'm sort of like sort of looking, you know, blissfully sort of, uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to be Demure. looking like. Brian Grant, he's such a pervert. <laughs> um, but it was freezing cold. It was like 20 below, and I was just like shivering. I was in absolute pain. I had all my clothes on. And, like, it's going to be a clean story, isn't it? Well, actually, I may not have to stop right <laughs> now. So the director was having a fun time watching my T-shirt. Anyway, I won't even go into that. <laughs> 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 yes, it sounds like this. I get a tickle in my throat, but do carry on. No, it's funny because it's supposed to be so, it's supposed to be so, so, so serene, and in fact, I was in agony. But it does it, it works quite well, I think. You know. More recently, of course, you've been working with a whole variety of people, and yet you've said that you wanted to get much more involved in the songwriting process yourself. Yeah. With the new material, have you been able to do that? Absolutely, yeah. The last few albums, and um, especially the last album, and now, of course, this one and the new single which I wrote with my uh, guitarist. So yeah. I've been working really hard, you know, and people sort of say, well, what have you been doing? You know, wonder what pop stars do when they're not sort of being pop stars. And I said, well, actually, I've been working really hard. So I have, yeah. How much is it uh, a question of having to live down the fact that, you know, you're quite attractive, that, you, that you're a daughter of a famous pop star in your own right, and that mm. you might be a bit of a dumb blonde who's just thrust into the limelight? Well, you know, that, I mean, I've been making records for, I'm in my eighth year now, which is, you know, it's going some, really, mm. for, in this business. And, I mean, I think, really, gradually, people are sort of cottoning on to the fact that I'm actually really, you know, into music. And, um, I mean, I don't care how long it takes. You know, if it takes another ten years, and then people suddenly go, God, yeah, Kim, Kim Wilde is really into music. Mm. If people say that, I, I won't mind, you know, that's... That's as, about as much as I want anyone to say about me. I, I don't want sort of any great accolades or anything. And, you know, I'm very happy doing what I do. I, I don't need to be sort of public, you know, my, my ego isn't such that it needs that kind of massaging, you know. Mm. A very healthy outlook, I reckon. This one did uh, the business for you back in 1986. Uh, you just keep me hanging on. Originally done by the Supremes, I do believe, back uh, 20 years ago or so. Kim Wilde. <laughs> You just keep me hanging on, Kim Wilde. We even had an impromptu concert in the studio while that was playing. You're quite well into that still, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I love it. Love it. Very good song. Mm. Uh, Rocking Around the Christmas Tree, of course, saw you springing up round about Christmas time with Mel Smith. A happy yeah. experience for you, that. Oh, yeah. What a, great, what a great thing to do at Christmas, have a Christmas record out. What a lot of fun Original. <laughs> it's such fun. I've never yeah. had a, a record out around about Christmas time, really. I've always, like, hit... Um, you know, like big hit, you know. Mm. It was such fun, especially because, with Mel, of course. Yeah, of course, and it was for charity, wasn't it? And of course, it was for comic relief, which is the best thing of all. Yeah. And, th and it's unbelievable, you know, they just sort of did the Red Nose Day and everyone got really involved in it. I think they made something like £14 million. Pounds. Which was brilliant. Absolutely oh brilliant. God, you know, it's amazing. At the time, you said that charity and helping, perhaps, kids was something that you increasingly wanted to do if you had the time in yeah. your career. Is that still um, an aim? Very much so, yeah. I love, I love working with young people, and I'm, I'm quite involved with the, um, the uh, National Association of Youth Clubs, and uh, so um, I just, you know, I just like young people. Mm. What prompted that desire? Um, uh, well, we have a lot of young people work at our studio, actually, on YTS. Um, I know it gets knocked a lot, but um, we have a lot of kids, a lot of young people come up to our studio, and they do a bit of work experience, mm. and uh, a lot of the people that have come up and done that have stayed and gone on to become, you know, fine engineers or people, you know, whatever they want to do. Mm. And that's really what prompted me, because I just thought, God, you know, young people have so much to offer and, and they, just need, they just need the encouragement. So, um, you know, that, that's as much as I can really do is encourage people. And that's, you do what you can do. If I can go out and encourage kids to, you know, do things, then, I mean, we, we could always, you know, 
we all need that kind of Sure, sure. And we all need a start in life too. YTS, I should explain to our European viewers, is a government scheme whereby kids get paid very little but get work experience in the process, which the government feels is very important. Talking about rocking around the Christmas tree, it showed you off as a very good actress, Do I thought. Think, huh? And the last time we spoke, I think you were kind of maybe thinking about broadening your career and looking at acting as an alternative to music or maybe running it alongside your musical output. Is that still a goal? It's not kind of like a burning ambition, you know, I never got into the music business to become an actress. Um, I got into it because I love music and acting is something that I, I have a tremendous respect for, for people who can do it. And uh, I've always been a bit scathing, of, you know, I've never been terribly um, convinced about pop stars when they make that transition and I, I really don't know, I'm not sure, I'm not convinced. But I thought since rather than waste like 40 million or a couple of million pounds of some poor film director, money or whatever the producers money, producers yeah. money um, I'd uh, use my own money which I'm, my own money buys my own videos I pay for my videos god damn it and um, I thought I'd do a bit of acting so I tried it in my latest bid mm. well let's take a look at that <laughs> because uh, that's a nice link into that somebody you might recognize on backing vocals from the soundtrack too and we'll be talking a bit about him after we've seen hey mr. heartache the sound on that one, I think, that I'm used to from you. Mm, Very yeah. big drums and stuff. Yeah, it's funky. Very good. Junior was on backing vocals there. I know he's been a keen collaborator of yours. Why do you like working with Junior so much? Oh, I love him. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> he's very talented, you know. I mean, you just put, you ask him to come up to the studio and you don't know what you're going to get. And he just, he just heaps loads of wonderful things onto you. And, you know, he has loads of great ideas. And, oh God, he just, he just makes magic things happen. One of the nicest guys I think I've met, probably, in the industry, too. Yeah. A very genuine chap. Yeah. It brings me on to another subject. I dug this out of one of the music magazines uh, just the other day, and it's the James Hamilton column here. He talks about dance music. And uh, there's an entry here called Mike and Mr. Heartache, and he reckons, in reality, that's Kim Wilde with Junior. Is that a special dance mix or something? M-Y-K, it's got there. Oh. Maybe it's a bootleg copy you know nothing about. Oh. Interesting. News to her. Quickly get her lawyer on the telephone. Oh, I don't know. Je ne, je ne comprends pas de tout. Hein? Oui. Say so. Well, never mind. <laughs> I thought I might throw that one at you and uh, indeed you know nothing about that. Strange, <laughs> but never mind. Wish we hadn't now. Um, your family, of course, have always been very important to you. We were talking about them a bit earlier mm. and uh, still very close to them, obviously. I mean, yeah. not just in a work sense, but I mean, um, it goes deeper than that, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know, I love my family. Yeah. Yeah. But I work with them, you know, and it works very well. You know, my mum and um, a guy we have working with, has worked, I've known him since I was a teenager, he works with us now. I mean, it's great, because I have people around me who take care of business, but they, you know, I love them too, and, and it just seems to work. I mean, sometimes we get on each other's nerves, but, uh, you know, that's a very rare occurrence, and it's only a sort of a human sort of thing, isn't it? Mm. Definitely. So the new album, very quickly, before we take a look at you and Junior and Another Step, it's oh. been um, produced by... Tony Swain. Tony Swain and my brother, Ricky Wilde. Right. And um, it took us a few months. I mean, we didn't t sort of take an awful long time to do it, you know. We, we, we took a long time getting the right material. Uh, and we, we discarded an awful lot of songs. Anyone out there who uh, needs any pop songs, <laughs> just get in contact with our publishing company. <laughs> <laughs> She's always thinking about the business, <coughs> so to speak, the music business. Right, so let's uh, play out with Kim Wilde and Junior then. Thanks very much for joining us today. Oh. Pleasure. And you look fine, despite your poked in eye a bit. Thank you. All right. And you, did, you haven't changed at all. Watching that video montage, I was thinking, oh, you've been in the business for about that. seven years, and I don't think you've changed very much. I mean, you might have looked a little younger in the earlier videos, but I don't think you've changed that much. Uh, uh, I'll take that as a compliment. All right, then. Coffee at your place after this. <laughs> Tim Wilde and Junior and Another Step.